He will never give up on us because of His great love for us. What an important reminder as we start our time together today. Welcome to Community Online. I'm so glad you're here. Our mission is to help people find their way back to God. And by joining us today, you've already taken your first step. We would love to help you take your next steps. If you're new to Community Online, a special welcome to you. We would love to connect and get to know you. Just create your account at communityonline.tv so we can learn your name and somebody will follow up with you this week to help you take your next step here at Community. If you've already created your account, go ahead and log in so we know who's celebrating with us today. Today is an exciting day because it's Celebration Generosity. This is the 15th year in a row that we've taken one weekend across all our community expressions and devoted it completely to generosity outside the walls of our church. Every week, we take up an offering that furthers the Jesus mission here at Community. But today, we want to make a bold statement of faith and trust in God by giving the entire offering away to the teams of Celebration Generosity. To help us get started, our founding pastors, Dave and John Ferguson, are going to share the story of how Celebration Generosity began. I think you'll find that there are a lot of similarities between where we are today and where we were 15 years ago. John, it's hard to believe that it's been 15 years since the very first Celebration Generosity. Yeah, and in some ways it feels like it was just yesterday, yet in other ways it feels like a long time ago. I can say this for sure, it was a significant time in the life of community. But what do you remember about how it got started? Well, it was right about this time 14 years ago that lots of individuals and lots of businesses started feeling the first signs of a massive recession. And we felt that at Community for sure. Six months into the year and our giving was not meeting our projections. Now, I was probably trying not to ask myself these questions, but nonetheless, I was thinking, should we back off the vision? Should we slow things down? Should we kind of throttle back? I remember thinking that and talking about it as a staff. So then we decided to set aside a day of fasting and prayer to seek God's wisdom concerning our challenges. And then when we regrouped, we asked the staff, so what do you think God is saying to us? And there was a lot of silence. But finally, someone did speak up and said, I know we're in a crisis and I know this won't make sense in our current economic climate. But I don't think God's calling us to shrink back the vision. I think God is calling us to actually expand the vision. It was definitely not what we expected to hear, I can say that. But as we prayed, we felt like God was not wanting us to hold back, but to step forward in faith and take one weekend to give all the money that comes in to causes outside of the walls of our church. And we had to have a name for it, right? So we called it Celebration Generosity. And we gave that week's offering away to several teams doing incredible work to further the mission of Jesus. And that day, community, you showed up big. In the middle of a financial crisis, we gave away $250,000. I'm pretty sure that at the time, it was the largest offering we'd ever received, and we gave it all away. It was unbelievable. Now, over the years, we've had so much fun celebrating generosity. We've been able to share stories from here at Community, from churches in our networks in our region, and amazing stories of life change from across the world. And now, as we head into our 15th year of Celebration Generosity, we have given away more than $6.8 million. It's an amazing legacy. And as we look ahead today, I think God is challenging us to be even more generous, to make a difference in the real lives of real people in our communities, in the regions around us, and across the world. All right, John, I gotta ask you, after 15 years, what does Celebration Generosity mean to you? Well, first of all, Dave, I I can't tell you how proud I am of the amazing generosity of the people here at Community. I mean, year after year, we bring in more money on this weekend than any other. And for me personally, I just love the chance to be stretched once again in my own generosity. Uh, Every time my wife, Lisa and I, we, we dig a little deeper, we stretch a little bit further, be a little bit more generous than we were before, we just see God come through in amazing ways. Uh, But let me ask you, Dave, how has Celebration Generosity impacted you over the past 15 years? I just love the impact that we make. And when I think about like community cares or community freedom, uh, the churches we've been able to plant in Chicagoland, uh, the work at Frontline and through Compassion that are helping children around the world, and new thing. I don't know if if you all know this, but there were over 5,000 churches planted in just the first six months of 2022 through new thing. I mean, that's unbelievable. Yeah, that is so good. Now, before we go any further with this amazing celebration, I want you to take out your phone, all right? Go ahead right now, it's okay, take it out. 
and I want you to open the community app. Now, if you don't have the app on your phone, download it right now. Go ahead and download it right now. And if it helps, you can get the app by scanning the QR code on the screen or by texting APP to 331-226-1686. Go ahead and do that right now. Whether you're in one of our locations, celebrating with Community Online, in a 3C community, or through Community Freedom, today is the day when we will give away the offering. And later in the service, we're gonna ask you to do that from the community app. So stand by and let's get ready to celebrate generosity. My name is Amy Plummer, and I'm the Director of Community Cares. And at Community Cares, we are passionate about uniting people together to be a catalyst for change in their community. And that means we're bringing people together to be a part of restoring God's dream for the world. We're working in four key areas, poverty alleviation, racial reconciliation, education, and incarceration. As we dream about next year, we're really excited about the ways that we're gonna be able to care for our community like the new food pantry that we've partnered with Loaves and Fishes in Plainfield to provide a mobile pantry for that community, or to be able to serve 9,000 meals to our neighbors at Hesed House. We're looking forward to hosting five cohorts for Living Undivided um, to engage and ignite 350 people to be a part of racial healing and solidarity in our community. Also to partner um, with local police and uh, sheriff offices to be able to engage in those conversations with them. In terms of incarceration, Community Freedom has been working uh, for years now to be able to reduce the recidivism rate here in Illinois. And we wanna be a part of helping people as they step out of a season of incarceration and into a real flourishing life of returning home. And then we're finally, we're, we're looking forward to educational partnerships. Gift Mart, this is gonna be our 20th Gift Mart, and we are so excited to invite 3,000 families to be a part of that event this year. We're really grateful for the administrators at our Gift Mart partner schools. Uh, people like Dr. Moreno from AO Marshall, who just clear the way for us to be able to support those communities through Kids Hope Mentoring, through the school supply, backpack drives, and through Gift Mart. I was excited when I was moved to Marshall that I would still get an opportunity to participate in Gift Mart. Each group of parents would have like a, a little helper and uh, they would help them go and shop. Everything was new. So it was just really nice to be able to see if it was Barbie dolls or drones or trucks or all, you know, games, board games, just a variety of things. And the cost that the parents, you know, um, typically they only had to pay like about $2. Once they would pick the toys that they wanted, then they would go into the gift wrap area. All their children saw were their parents and this big sack. So they knew that it had presents in it probably for them, but they didn't know what it was. So then they were excited and they had also had a fun day. So it, it really ended up being like an entire, you know, morning of activity. When the money came back to the school, we typically would use it for things that would benefit the entire building. So this past year, we rented uh, some like carnival games for our field day. So again, the entire building was able to benefit from that because we had those funds from Gift Mart. When I realized that Gift Mart was also happening in other suburbs, I was like, wow, because I was just excited that it was happening here. But then I was like, wait, Aurora? wait, it's happening in all these other places. And that just really warmed my heart. The expressions on the family's faces, um, I, I can't really put a price on that. It led me to even think, you know, like when they would have the fundraisers to make sure that I was also donating because I just thought it was something that was really, really worthwhile. My name is Eric Dorsey, and I am the pastor of Community Freedom. And Community Freedom is our initiative to plant churches inside of prisons and jails. Well, the mission of Community Freedom, just like community, is to help people find their way back to God. But we have an additional kind of submission, as I like to call it, to walk people from confinement to freedom. We've had an opportunity to help five different men to get back on their feet. Some are in the process, some are already back on their feet and, and doing well but it's an important part of showing the love of God and showing them that we care about them and they were not just someone we were visiting in prison, but they are a part of our community family. We see people far from God find their way back to God 
And we see that community freedom creates a space for those who already are Christ followers in the prisons and jails, really build community with other believers, and it kind of keeps them stable. There is one gentleman, a young man, who's been attending community freedom for the past couple of weeks. He had a very rough life, uh, comes from the gang culture, and he had a situation where he was really wrestling with God because his mom had tragically been killed. Uh, by an individual in his neighborhood. And he was so angry and bitter from that. He felt like, how can God be real? He was uh, going to get revenge on this person. And in the process of getting revenge, he himself got shot. And he actually flatlined. Miraculously, they were able to revive him. And he's you know alive today, of course. And so he tells this story to everyone and the room goes silent. And he says, forgive me, pastor, but I just don't think that God is talking to me. I said, no, God is talking to you. I said, the very fact that you're breathing, the very fact that you're living, means that God is not finished with you. And I just began to exhort to him and encourage him in that moment. I can't even remember all the things that I said to him. I think it was like the Holy Spirit just began speaking through me. And before you know it, the entire room is giving him a standing ovation and he just lost it. He just broke down. And he was shaking his head like, yes, now I know that God is talking to me. I mean, you can't script those, you can't plan them out. They're just God-inspired, God-ordained moments so we have an opportunity to experience on a regular basis at Community Freedom. It's amazing what God has done and continues to do through Celebration Generosity. 15 years, that's quite a legacy. And I'm so grateful that today we get to enter into that legacy together. Which makes me think of one question. What kind of legacy do you want to leave? Because here's the reality. We're all leaving a legacy. Every single one of us. That part's not optional. The question is, what kind of legacy do you want to leave? How we answer that question has massive implications, ones that will have a ripple effect well beyond our own lives. Yet what we often don't realize is that at this very moment, right now, we are working on our legacy. For most of us, we aren't aware of that reality each day. It's a difficult thing to keep in the forefront of our minds that the time we invest or don't invest, the resources we use or don't use, the energy we give or don't give will determine the kind of legacies we leave. There's a philosopher from the late 1800s that put it this way, the great use of life is to spend it for something that will outlast it. My guess is that most of us deep down in our souls agree with that statement. Amidst all the noise and appointments and challenges and joys, we want to live for something that matters, to spend our lives for something that will have an impact far beyond our time here on earth. Now, one person in the Bible who was keenly aware of the importance of his legacy was the Apostle Paul. He spent a lot of time and resources and energy investing in the lives of others so that their impact would outlast his life. So when Paul was facing prison and hardships and potentially death, it's natural that he began to reflect on his legacy. He gathers the leaders from a church he started in a town called Ephesus to tell them goodbye. And he says this, And now, compelled by the Spirit, I am going to Jerusalem, not knowing what will happen to me there. I only know that in every city, the Holy Spirit warns me that prison and hardships are facing me. However, I consider my life worth nothing to me. My only aim is to finish the race and complete the task the Lord Jesus has given me, the task of testifying to the good news of God's grace. Paul's saying that the aim of his whole life has been to be used for the mission of Jesus, for his time and his resources and his energy to be offered up to help move the mission forward. And then he leaves these Ephesian Christ followers with these departing words. In everything I did, I showed you that by this kind of hard work, we must help the weak. Remembering the words the Lord Jesus himself said, 
It is more blessed to give than to receive. What was the reminder that Paul wanted to leave with these Ephesian Christ followers before he bid them farewell? That they were to work hard, using their time and resources and energy to help the weak, those in need, the oppressed, the hurting, just as he had done. And to drive his point home, he quotes Jesus, it is more blessed to give than to receive. Think about the challenge in these powerful last words. Work hard to meet the needs and help change the lives of those who are hurting, for it is more blessed to give than to receive. And the reason these last words were so powerful is because they matched how Paul lived his life. Let me say that again. The reason these last words are so powerful is because they matched how Paul lived his life. Wouldn't you like the legacy of your life to be summed up in words like these? Oh, he worked hard to meet the needs of those that were hurting. Yes, she gave so much of herself to help change the lives of those in need. That community of people, they really lived out the words of Jesus that it is more blessed to give than to receive. I mean, that would be an amazing legacy. But to leave that kind of legacy, we have to live like that right now, while we are alive. Another leader in the early church, John, explains it this way. And we ought to lay down our lives for our brothers and sisters. If anyone has material possessions and sees a brother or sister in need, but has no pity on them, how can the love of God be in that person? Dear children, let us not love with words or speech, but with action and in truth. John is reminding us that that our words have no meaning if they are not backed by our actions. And that is one of the reasons why I love celebration generosity. Celebration generosity gives me and it gives you an opportunity to put into action who we really want to be. It is your and it is my opportunity to not just say, let's meet needs and help change lives, to not just believe it is more blessed to give than to receive, but to actually do it, not just with words or speech, but with actions. I'm asking you to join me and take action right now. 15 years ago, on that very first celebration generosity, these words were spoken. And 15 years later, I believe they still hold true. Today is what I believe will be a historic and heroic moment, not only in the life of this church, but also in each of our lives. Today is one of those rare chances for you to script a moment in your life that will be remembered forever. It was true 15 years ago, and it's true today. Let's continue learning about the opportunity we have today to leave a legacy of generosity. New Thing is a catalyst for movements of reproducing churches, and we're doing that all over the world. But what I love is that story got started right here at Community. And while we're doing all this work globally, we have not taken our eye off the ball here in Chicagoland. And Eric Metcalf is leading our Chicagoland movement, along with John Ferguson, and they're working with churches right here in Chicagoland, collaborating with those churches to plant new churches, and I love it. New Thing Chicagoland is really passionate about catalyzing networks, multicultural networks that would transform uh, the city of Chicago. A network is really like a small group for pastors. The benefit of a network of churches that are working together, it can give them the community they need, the support they need, the encouragement they need to stay on that mission of that new church work. We have churches from different parts of the neighborhoods in the city, from the suburbs, they're in these networks together. They're a very diverse group of leaders that are working together with diverse backgrounds to plant new churches. And it's just a very exciting experience. One of the leaders we've gotten to know recently uh, is Omero Garcia. Uh, he's a wonderful leader who leads La Iglesia and Mundelein. And uh, he's also, he's one of our network leaders and he's spoken at a few of our gatherings. And about once or twice a year, we'll, we'll spend some time with Omero just asking and looking ahead, hey, if you could speak into what we're doing, how would you lead us? My wife and I came to the U.S. uh, to study at Trinity Evangelical Divinity School. The idea was to graduate and then go back to Mexico. 
But in the process, the Lord said, no, you're staying, and by the way, you're planting a Spanish-speaking church in Mandalay, Illinois. So after we made some disciples uh, years ago, the Lord spoke to our church and said, it is time for you to raise up leaders, train them, and send them out to plant churches. By the grace of God, we have been able to plant about 25, 26 churches in the process. Let me tell you the story about Omar Aparicio. He came to our church years ago because he was dating a girl from a church. He wasn't a believer at that time. In fact, he told me that he was part of a satanic cult. He came one Sunday to our church, he heard the message, and then he started to cry out to God saying, please forgive me, I didn't know what I was doing. And he was a changed man. And a few months later, he said, I want to start a church. I want to become a pastor. Can you help me with that? So we trained him and then we sent them out to plant a church in Round Lake, Illinois. We know that if we want to reach more people for Christ and make more disciples and raise up more leaders and send out more church planters, we're not gonna be able to do that on our own. I really love this relationship that we have with New Thing because I know I need New Thing if we want to expand the kingdom of God. In August, we gathered leaders from all over the world into what we call Dream Week. And Dream Week is just a, an intense week of conversations over Zoom with leaders from all, all corners of the globe. When I step back from Dream Week after I hear all these stories, get to meet all these leaders, what has been a season of disruption is leading to a season of innovation. Innovation in an area like microchurch. And a microchurch is a small church that is more relationally focused. We're talking to leaders who are now working with digital missionaries. Our friend Jeff Reed leads the Digital Church Network to reach new people, to help new people find their way back to God in virtual reality spaces, online gaming communities. Let me tell you some stories. Uh, well, I've got my friend Dan. Dan has created through Facebook a digital church that's actually growing and multiplying disciples. Nicole is trying to figure out how to disciple kids so that they themselves can be part of a disciple-making movement, even as early as elementary school. Let's talk about Thomas. Thomas actually lives in Australia. Thomas wants to create a microchurch network on Zoom. We're caring, we're providing community for this innovative next wave of churches. And New Thing in Community has been an incredible resource for us. So I wanna celebrate you out there at Community Church and the generosity that you are sharing, allowing someone like me to do ministry and multiplying churches in unique spaces to reach a different type of person uh, than the buildings are currently reaching today. And then we're seeing this innovation happen, not only here in North America, but we're seeing it happen in places like the Philippines. So my friend Che Che, she's in her early 20s, and she's a leader in the Philippines, in Bago City, Philippines. And she has a dream. Her idea is to plant rabbit churches that become elephant churches. I love the creativity she brings to it and the enthusiasm she has. And her story is so indicative of what we do all over the world. We come alongside these women and men who dream big, who take risks for Jesus, who want to see his kingdom grow through church planting, and we help them do what God's called them to do. I just want to share the big dream of God. The Lord has called me to go home in the Philippines to fulfill His mission and to serve in the in the ministry. I attended the New Thing Catalyst, and this was my big dream for the Lord to have a 20 churches leaders. I draw immediately the blueprint of the Lord for these big dreams. Every day, I started going out and sharing the good news with the people. I began the journey of being a church planter, and an average of 50 people began attending the Sunday worship. And for the next New Thing Catalyst again, I brought leaders with me. And this time I was no longer alone in dreaming and pursuing God's big dream. As of now, we have 17 leaders. And then we have one elephant church. And we have eight networks and we have 30 rabbit churches. Our big dream, well, at the next two years, we will have 68 leaders, three elephant church, 32 networks, and 120 churches. The great part of New Thing for me is that it started right here at Community about 15 years ago. And it started with the heart of helping people find their way back to God. And that really is translated in everything we do, whether they be in India or in Moldova, 
or in the Philippines. Doesn't much matter to us because every one of them deserves an opportunity to hear about God and what Jesus has done for them. One of our partners for Celebration Generosity is Compassion International. And we love partnering with Compassion as their model for releasing children from extreme poverty is recognized as the most effective way to do so. And over the years, we've sponsored over 1,800 children through Compassion in Haiti and in Nicaragua. Community, you continue to be faithful in those commitments, and I am so grateful. We've also established child survival centers in Haiti, Nicaragua, and the Philippines through Compassion. And this year's celebration generosity looks to identify two additional child survival centers to fund. But these are difficult times for Compassion, particularly in Haiti and Nicaragua. The work we do in those countries goes on, but outside forces have strained the relationship considerably. We've asked Mark Palingra from Compassion to share with us some of those updates so we can know how to pray for the work that's being done there and also around the world. Coming out of the pandemic, we still face plenty of challenges, as you can imagine. Compassion works with over 8,000 churches in 26 different nations. Each of those churches is under-resourced and small and face their own struggles. But God blesses us and allows us, people like us, you and me, to bless His people. And I'm excited about the fact that Community Christian is focusing on launching two additional survival programs. But I'm asking for your prayers. Haiti faces tremendous struggles. Um, as you know, there's considerable violence right, right now. People are desperate. And because of desperation, bad things happen. In Nicaragua, things are a little bit better and they're on an upward trajectory, but that country also still needs your prayers as the government moves towards a more authoritarian style and starts to persecute the church. On top of that, we're facing recession, a world recession, and a food crisis that we have no idea what the scope is going to be. We've heard stories of desperation from people who have for years planted their gardens uh, and then they've used the sustenance from those gardens to sustain their families. People are out in their gardens guarding them in some places with machetes to protect what little they have. But friends, God has gift us, gifted us with the ability to do something, to help with the situations like that. And that's why I'm so grateful for your celebration this weekend. Folks, thank you for your graciousness. Thank you for your heart for the poor and for your heart to release children from poverty in Jesus' name. Hi, my name is Jeffrey Piscina, and I'm the founding director of Philippine Frontline Ministries. Philippine Frontline Ministries is a ministry that is uh, reaching out holistically to the Philippine people. We have uh, four areas of ministry. That is in evangelism, which is church planting, uh, child care, which is helping children off the streets, education, which is giving children and young people a great education, and we also do social enterprise, which is providing jobs for people in need. Celebration Generosity has been an amazing journey for us, and I'm proud of the fact that Frontline and Community Christian Church have been on this journey together. It's been over 15 years now that Dave and John came out, we met them. It's meant a lot to us. What uh, Celebration Generosity has done at Frontline, it's phenomenal what we've accomplished and done together. Some highlights over the last year have been uh, the opening of our school, Frontline Christian Academy. Um, we're thankful that uh, after two years, uh, we've been able to get children now back in school. That's been a great blessing. Frontline Christian Academy is finally open after two years of closure due to the pandemic. Uh, we've been super excited to see new students walk into the once empty building. We went from 78 students uh, to 150, and this is a step in the right direction. It's our biggest enrollment ever. We hope to continue increasing student enrollment in the coming school years so that we can exponentially grow our impact and so that we can finally reach financial sustainability. We're also able to open up our sewing factory so people that work there are now able to come back and work and, and earn a living again. So that's been a real blessing to us. One of the main highlights, I think, for us has been what our church planting team has been doing. And they've had uh, about a dozen gatherings of over 150, 200 pastors now from all over the nation, uh, encouraging pastors to plant more churches, 
home churches, house churches, and it's just leading to phenomenal results all across the Philippines. Over this coming year, what we hope to do with your generosity um, is to continue to bring more children in to face the children, which is our child care program. We currently have 30. We've got about five kids now that are in university that have graduated high school this year. So we have room for about 10 or 20 more, and we're praying to God that we can open doors for more children. We want to thank you, our dear friends, for walking with us through these crazy times. We do face many challenges still, but we trust that our God will provide all of our needs as we call on Him. On behalf of Philippine Frontline Ministries, I would just like to say thank you to everybody that's participated in Celebration Generosity. Um, I like one of the things that Dave says. He says, our fruit grows on other people's trees. You guys have a lot of fruit growing in the Philippines, and uh, the journey's been very fruitful. It's been a great investment, I believe that. And uh, I want to say thank you and God bless to everybody who gives anything towards Celebration Generosity. It's going into the kingdom of heaven. It's a great investment. There's many children that have graduated from, from school, from college, churches that have been planted. Only heaven will tell one day what uh, your generosity has done in the Philippines. One of the amazing stories at Frontline today is uh, of a young girl named Judea. She's not as young anymore. Um, she's been with us for over 15 years, uh, which goes back to the beginning of our relationship with Community Christian Church. It's just one of those amazing stories of what God's love can do and what uh, our generosity does in the lives of other people. I met Frontline when I was 11 years old. Um, I live with my mom and my stepdad. My mom doesn't have a stable job, so I was always in the market with my, my friends rooming around. Judea found her way into our drop-in center, which is a city center where we would bring kids in, feed them, let them get washed, take care of their sores and their wounds. If you know anything about many of these children, there's uh, oftentimes in some cities, there's literally hundreds of thousands of children roaming the streets. And so our drop-in center, uh, Judea came in, we met her. She'd been living on the streets for several years. My sister actually invited me to the frontline drop-in center. And she invited me because um, she said there, there was some activities for me. Um, I moved to FTC because my mother brought me there and be because I was sexually abused when I was in the street. Living at FTC was actually hard for me. Um, but at the time goes by, um, to come to think of it, it was actually a blessing that I was able to study, I was able to have a shelter, three times a day meal and people who actually cares and loves me. She went through our school. She did a great job in school. She was studious and uh, she went on to uh, university. She graduated, got her degree in psychology. I really wanted to go to college and finish my studies. That's because I want to give my, my siblings a good life as well. And I don't want us to to go through the life that we've been through when we were just a when we were a child. I've been applying to um, different job in Manila and I have some offers and the same night three offers came to me and also Mike Gordon the head of Compassion Ministry the, the orphanage asked me if I, I wanted to work at FTC. Now she's on staff she's actually managing Face the Children program and uh, we couldn't have a better leader so, uh, someone that's come off of the streets gone through our program and now is actually leading the program. What I love working at FTC is just being with the children, um, listening to them, um, being being a role model to them, and just you know listening to their story, listening to their dreams. That's really um, eager me more to to be with them. I'm really thankful to God and thankful to Frontline that gave me the opportunity to to study and give me the opportunity to know God. Frontline has been a huge blessing to me and for many people. And to tell you honestly, uh, last year I was able to bought, buy my own house, I my own car, and I have my own home that I can live in. And that's that's all thanks to God and of course the front line. Your generosity has made a huge difference in my life and I hope it will continue and make difference for children also in our care. What an amazing story. I love hearing about how God has transformed lives like Judea's through Celebration Generosity. It's so exciting that we get to partner with Him in this way. 
But before we give our very best, we want to come together as one church, one family, to celebrate the reason we give. In fact, Jesus asked us to do what we are about to do anytime we meet together. And since we are all together today, we are going to celebrate Jesus through communion. I encourage you to grab something to eat, like a piece of bread or cracker, and grab something to drink, like juice or water. When we eat the bread and drink from the cup, we remember God's ultimate act of generosity when He gave His very best. And as the most famous verse in the Bible says, for God so loved the world that He gave His one and only Son. Let yourself feel all the gratitude that this extravagant gift evokes as we prepare our hearts to receive communion. We say thank you to Jesus as we receive the bread, His body broken for us. And we say thank you to Jesus as we receive the cup, His blood shed for us. Would you pray with me? Creator God, thank you so much for this extravagant, generous gift of Jesus, His life, His generous gift of forgiveness and grace, and the gift of the Holy Spirit. It's in His name that I pray. Amen. All right. The moment has come. Are you ready? It's time to celebrate generosity. You can give through the community app or by going to givenow.cc or by texting the word GIVE to 331-226-1686. As you give, you'll be able to select the local, regional, or global teams or give to all three. Remember, this is our chance to be more generous than ever before. So take the opportunity right now to be generous, to give to these amazing, worthwhile causes. Today is a legacy day, a day when we get to put into action who we really want to be. Today is one of those chances for you to script a moment in your life that will be remembered forever. So let's celebrate generosity right now. Thank you for giving to Celebration Generosity. Thank you, community, for giving to Celebration Generosity. Hi, community. My name is Sarah Chumchayo, and I lead our Kids Hope mentoring team at our Plainfield location. And we just wanted to say thank you so much for your generosity during this celebration generosity time. Thank you, community, for your generosity. Thanks, community, for giving to Celebration Generosity. Hi, community. My name is Brianna Moore, and I currently serve on our global team. I wanted to thank you from the bottom of my heart for uh, supporting our ministry. Your generosity always helps us to bring a bit of God's kingdom to earth. Thank you, community, for your generosity. Thanks for your generosity. Gracias, Iglesia Comunidad Cristiana, por dar a la celebración de la generosidad. Hi, I'm Rebecca Irwin. And I'm Julie Bauer. And we're here at our Plainfield location where we partner with Loaves and Fishes for our weekly food assistance program. We so, so appreciate and are moved by the outpouring of support from our church family. Thank you for your continued support with Celebration Generosity. Thank you, community, for your generosity. Thank you for your prayers. Thank you for your financial support. Know that you're all in our thoughts and prayers as well. God bless you all.
it out to him tonight. An amazing celebration. Thank you so much for joining us today and for being so incredibly generous. There is still time to give to our local, regional, and global teams, but time is running out. You can give to Celebration Generosity up until 1159 tonight, October 9th. Join those who have already given today by heading to the community app or text GIVE to 331-226-1686, or you can scan the QR code below. And as we look ahead, next week we'll be starting a brand new series called Starting Over. If you feel stuck in any area of your life, God wants to help you move beyond your regrets into a new beginning. You don't want to miss it. 
Thank you so much for being with us today, and we will see you next time here at Community Online.